So friends, I want to do something just a little bit different today. Rather than talk about our troubled legal landscape or our never-ending quest for justice, for accountability to come to Donald Trump and his criminal associates for his crimes, I want to talk about a different kind of justice story today. I want to talk about the quest for justice for the murder of a young man, a young lawyer named Robert Wan. It was a case that I investigated, indicted, and tried. So if you'll indulge me, I'd like to talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, today I want to do something a little bit different than we ordinarily do in these Daily Justice Matters chats, you know, talking about Donald Trump's never-ending crime spree, talking about how Donald Trump is at this point probably the most investigated and least prosecuted person in the history of our nation. I want to set all that aside just for one day. And I want to talk about a different kind of justice story. And it involves the unsolved murder of a young man named Robert Wan. There is a two-part documentary that is um, premiering on Peacock TV in the coming days. And it is titled, Who Killed Robert Wan? I participated in the documentary because I investigated the murder of Robert Wan. I indicted three men, not for the murder of Robert Wan, but for covering up the murder of Robert Wan. And I am hopeful that people will watch this two-part documentary and will know something, will have some information, will have some evidence, and will share it with us, with the police, with the homicide detectives in Washington, D.C., and will help us, quite frankly, answer the question of who killed Robert Wan. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about the case, give you a little bit of background, and then what I want to do, friends, is read just one paragraph, the first paragraph of the affidavit in support of the arrest warrant that we obtained in this case. What is an affidavit in support of an arrest warrant? Well, when we investigate a case, this is when I was a homicide prosecutor in Washington, D.C., and I was working with the homicide detectives and a team of law enforcement agents investigating the murder of Robert Wan. When we get to a point where we believe we have enough evidence to seek an arrest warrant, we put it all in an affidavit contains the facts, the evidence, the information. The detective swears to that affidavit, and then we present it to a judge. And we see if the judge agrees that there is probable cause to arrest somebody for a particular crime. All I want to do today is read the first paragraph of what is a very lengthy affidavit um, to sort of set up what you will see in this two-part documentary, Who Killed Robert Wan. Let me give you a little bit of backstory, friends. Robert Wan was a very accomplished, beloved young man, young lawyer, who had just started a job as general counsel at Radio Free Asia here in Washington, D.C. As a matter of work convenience, because he was going to have to go in and meet the night shift at Radio Free Asia, he was going to have to go in at like five in the morning. He had a friend from law school who lived just a matter of blocks away from his new job, and he asked if he could stay at his friend's house just as a matter of work convenience. He'd never stayed over there before. Now, who was Robert Wan's friend? Whose house did he stay over? It was a home that belonged to three men. It was an expensive, well-appointed, high-end home in Northwest Washington, D.C., in the 1500 block of Swan Street Northwest, and it belonged to a guy named Joe Price, a guy named Victor Zaborski, and a guy named Dylan Ward. 
Those three men lived together in that high-end, expensive, well-appointed home in the 1500 block of Swan Street. Robert Wan arrived at their house, this is back in 2006, to spend the night. And within about an hour or an hour and a half, Victor Zaborski, one of the residents, was placing a 911 call saying, our friend has been stabbed in our guest room. Send an ambulance. And when the ambulance arrived, the first emergency personnel on the scene came across something that was unlike anything they had ever seen before. Robert Wan, dead, in a bed, in a guest room on the second floor of that home, lying ramrod straight, with the covers folded down underneath him at a 45 degree angle, and he had three gaping chest wounds with no blood on his torso. That is the beginning of what would become this incredible journey, odyssey, for first and foremost the family members, the friends, the community that loved Robert and his family, um, and me as a prosecutor and my team of homicide detectives. Because the three men who lived in that house, Joe Price, Victor Zaborski, and Dylan Ward, it became apparent had no interest in assisting law enforcement, in assisting the prosecutors, in answering the question, who killed Robert Wan? So I investigated it for years. And I could never develop enough evidence to apply for an arrest warrant for the murder of Robert Wan because these three guys had been covering it up. And I had to decide, do I let it go? Do I leave it there? Guess what I decided? No, we put together an application for an arrest warrant for these three men for obstructing justice, for covering up the murder of Robert Wan. And we presented it to a judge and a judge agreed there was enough evidence that these three men were obstructing justice. Against that backdrop, let me read, friends, just the first paragraph of what I said is a very lengthy affidavit in support of the arrest warrant for Joe Price, Victor Zaborski, and Dylan Ward. And then we will be talking more in the future after the documentary airs about who killed Robert Wan. Here is how the affidavit opens. In the late evening hours of August 2, 2006, Robert Wan was murdered inside a residence located at 1509 Swan Street Northwest in Washington, D.C. The known occupants of the residence present at the time of the murder were Joe Price, Victor Zaborski, and Dylan Ward. And then under the heading the call to 911, the affidavit reads, At 11.49 p.m. on August 2, 2006, Victor Zaborski called 911 and reported that an intruder had stabbed a guest in their home. Emergency personnel were immediately dispatched to the location. When asked by the 911 operator whether they needed police, fire, or ambulance, Zaborski requested only an ambulance. Within the first 90 seconds of the call, Zaborski related to the 911 operator, quote, we heard, uh, we think it was somebody, an intruder in the house, we heard a chime, the door, close quote. Zaborski's comments to the 911 operator suggest that he had talked with the other residents in the house before placing the call in that he represented things that we saw and we heard allegedly before discovering Mr. Wan had been attacked. The operator then told Zaborski to, quote, get a dry cloth, apply pressure to that area where he was stabbed. Even if the towel is saturated with blood, just get another towel and put it on top of that. Never lift the first towel off the area. Hold it on. Once it gets filled up with blood, just put another towel on top of that and just apply pressure 
until the paramedics arrive. Zaborski responded, my partner is holding it, a towel, on there. He's applying pressure. The operator further instructed, quote, just keep applying pressure. You need to hold it there until the paramedics get there. During the 911 call, Zaborski asked the operator, what time is it? To which the operator responded, 23.54, 11.54 p.m. Without prompting, Zaborski then volunteered that, quote, the person had one of our knives. Approximately five minutes and 40 seconds into the call, Zaborski indicated that emergency personnel have arrived on the scene. Now, friends, as I say, that is just the first paragraph of a very lengthy affidavit in support of an arrest warrant, and we'll be talking about it more in future videos. But I do hope people will tune in to the two-part documentary that is premiering on Peacock TV. Importantly, there will be a tip line that um, will be included in the documentary so that anyone who has any information, anyone who may have spoken with these three individuals since the murder occurred back in 2006, anyone with information, hopefully will take advantage of that tip line, drop a dime, as we used to say back in the olden days, and provide whatever information you might have. Why? Because justice matters. Friends, please stay tuned to this one. Stay safe, and I look forward to talking with you all again soon.